The history of the tablets translated in the following pages is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years BC. The writer is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. He was the builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza, erroneously attributed to Cheops. In it, he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt, from approximately 52,000 BC to 36,000 BC. At that time, the ancient barbarous race among which he and his followers had settled had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Thoth was an immortal, that is, he had conquered death, passing only when he willed and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. When the time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti, placed in it his records, and appointed guards for his secrets from among the highest of his people. In later times, the descendants of these guards became the Pyramid Priest, by which Thoth was deified as the god of wisdom, the recorder, by those in the age of darkness which followed his passing. In legend, the halls of Amenti became the underworld, the halls of the gods, where the soul passed after death for judgment. During later ages, the ego of Thoth passed into the bodies of men in the manner described in the tablets. As such, he incarnated three times, in his last being known as Hermes the Thrice Born, in this incarnation, he left the writings known to modern occultists as the Emerald Tablets, a later and far lesser exposition of the ancient mysteries. The tablets translated in this work are ten which were left in the Great Pyramid in the custody of the Pyramid Priest. The ten are divided into thirteen parts for the sake of convenience. The last two are so great and far-reaching in their import that at present it is forbidden to release them to the world at large. However, in those contained herein are secrets which will prove of inestimable value to the serious student. They should be read not once, but a hundred times for only thus can the true meaning be revealed. A casual reading will give glimpses of beauty, but more intensive study will open avenues of wisdom to the seeker. But now, a word as to how these mighty secrets came to be revealed to modern man after being hidden so long. Some 1300 years BC, Egypt, the ancient Kim, was in turmoil and many delegations of priests were sent to other parts of the world. Among these were some of the pyramid priests who carried with them the emerald tablets as a talisman by which they could exercise authority over the less advanced priestcraft of races descended from other Atlantean colonies. The tablets were understood from legend to give the bearer authority from Thoth. The particular group of priests bearing the tablets immigrated to South America where they found a flourishing race, the Maya, who remembered much of the ancient wisdom. Among these, the priests settled and remained. In the 10th century, the Maya had thoroughly settled the Yucatan and the tablets were placed beneath the altar of one of the great temples of the sun god. After the conquest of the Maya by the Spaniards, the cities were abandoned and the treasures of the temples forgotten. It should be understood that the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been, and still is, a temple of initiation into the mysteries. Jesus, Solomon, Apollonius, and others were initiated there. The writer, who has a connection with the Great White Lodge, which also works through the Pyramid Priesthood, was instructed to recover and return to the Great Pyramid the ancient tablets. This, after adventures which need not be detailed here, was accomplished. Before returning them, he was given permission to translate and retain a copy of the wisdom engraved on the tablets. This was done in 1925, and only now has permission been given for part to be published. It is expected that many will scoff, yet the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. 
Now, a word as to the material aspect of the tablets. They consist of 12 tablets of emerald green formed from a substance created through an alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and substances. In effect, the atomic and cellular structure is fixed, no change ever taking place. In this respect, they violate the material law of ionization. Upon them are engraved characters in the ancient Atlantean language. Characters which respond to attuned thought waves, releasing the associated mental vibration in the mind of the reader. The tablets are fastened together with hoops of golden-colored alloy suspended from a rod of the same material. So much for the material appearance. The wisdom contained therein is the foundation of the ancient mysteries. And for the one who reads with open eyes and mind, his wisdom shall be increased a hundredfold. Read, believe or not, but read. And the vibration found therein will awaken a response in your soul. In Cosmic Harmony, Duriel, Supreme Voice of the Brotherhood. In the following pages, I will reveal some of the mysteries which as yet have only been touched upon lightly either by myself or other teachers or students of truth. Man's search for understanding of the laws which regulate his life have been unending, yet always just beyond the veil which shields the higher planes from material man's vision, the truth has existed, ready to be assimilated by those who enlarge their vision by turning inward not outward in their search. In the silence of material senses lies the key to the unveiling of wisdom. He who talks does not know. He who knows does not talk. The highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcend all material words or symbols. All symbols are but keys to doors leading to truths, and many times the door is not open because the key seems so great that the things which are beyond it are not visible. If we can understand that all keys, all material symbols are manifestations, are but extensions of a great law and truth, we will begin to develop the vision which will enable us to penetrate beyond the veil. All things in all universes move according to law, and the law which regulates the movement of the planets is no more immutable than the law which regulates the material expressions of man. One of the greatest of all cosmic laws is that which is responsible for the formation of man as a material being. The great aim of the mystery schools of all ages has been to reveal the workings of the law which connect man the material and man the spiritual. The connecting link between the material man and the spiritual man is the intellectual man, for the mind partakes of both the material and immaterial qualities. The aspirant for higher knowledge must develop the intellectual side of his nature and so strengthen his will that it is able to concentrate all powers of his being on and in the plane he desires. The great search for light, life, and love only begins on the material plane. Carried to its ultimate, its final goal is complete oneness with the universal consciousness. The foundation in the material is the first step. Then comes the higher goal of spiritual attainment. In the following pages, I will give an interpretation of the Emerald Tablets and their secret, hidden, and esoteric meanings. Concealed in the words of Thoth are many meanings that do not appear on the surface. Light of knowledge brought to bear upon the tablets will open many new fields for thought. Read and be wise, but only if the light of your own consciousness awakens the deep-seated understanding which is an inherent quality of the soul. In the Threefold Light, Duriel. I, Thoth the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after, these records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. In the great city of Kior on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation. 
Not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Kim shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware, O men of Kim, if ye have falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north, or the men of the south, lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely I will return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me, knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity knowledge that belonged to earth's youth. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And all of these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Totmi, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands, mouthpiece, after the three of the dweller of Unal, speaking to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom, until it burst into a consuming flame. Naught desired I but the attainment of wisdom until on a great day the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller so that his purposes might be fulfilled, purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom until I too approached the light emitted from the great fire. Taught me he the path to Amenti, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. Free was I of the halls of Amenti, bound not by death to the circle of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then, having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there I found greater mysteries and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste of the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually from the kingdoms of Atlantis passed ways of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew into flower. Downward into the darkness turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last in this wrath arose from his Agwanti the dweller, speaking the word, calling the power. Deep in earth's heart the sons of Amenti heard.